Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, create hello world function. And this is actually part of a new thing. This is a 30 day leak code JavaScript interview challenge. If you go to the leak code problems page, you can see the JavaScript 30 day challenge here, and then you can go ahead and start solving the problems. Today's topic is closure. As you can see, I guess for front end developers, a lot of companies are asking these types of interview questions. So let's get into it. And to be honest, I don't think it's about solving this problem problem because today's problem since it's day one is really trivial, but we really want to understand exactly what's going on with JavaScript because it's a pretty weird language. We are told to write a create hello world function. It should return a new function that always returns hello world. So I don't think it makes a lot of sense in this problem to do a huge like drawing explanation. So let's go ahead and just get into the code. And if you don't know how to set up the boilerplate, they pretty much gave us everything we need. If you're new to JavaScript, you might be looking at this and wondering what the hell is going on. So let's quickly write it out from scratch. You can see the return type is a function. So what we're doing here is creating a variable. We can use var in JavaScript or use let. I pretty much always use let. And for functions, you pretty much always want to use const. So I'm actually going to use that because we don't want to have to reassign this function or this variable to something else usually. So this is create hello world. And we're going to assign it to a function. And you can do that with the keyword function in JavaScript. And this function, we don't have to put a name here. Like when we're creating a function, we can do something like this function add. It takes maybe two parameters, num one, num two and it takes those parameters, adds them together and returns them. The reason we're getting an error here is probably because of this. So let's get rid of that. Yeah, you can see this works. So this has a name add, but we don't need to do it that way. We can see here we have a function without a name. It's anonymous. So we're allowed to do that because clearly we're taking this and assigning it to create hello world. So that's going to be its name. And the return type of this function is going to be another function. So let's return a function. Do we have to give it a name? Well, think about how this create hello world is going to be called. If I say create hello world, what did this do? This created a function like the return type of this is going to be a function. So if I say const a is equal to this, a is equal to this function. So the name of that function is now going to be a. So we don't need to give it a name here clearly because we're going to be returning the function and then it's going to be given a new name in some different scope like out here. This part is a little bit weird. Well, the boilerplate they gave us looked like this dot 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 args. This is the spread operator. We'll talk about that in a minute, but it's not really necessary for this problem. If I was doing a real interview, I probably wouldn't have written that because what this function is supposed to do is it's just supposed to return hello world as a string. So let's do that. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to get rid of this and run this code. You can see this is how our program is going to be executed. So let's see if this works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's efficient. But that was such a trivial problem that I'm going to now look at the editorial and we can see that there's quite a lot to discuss. Remember, this topic was about closure and to be honest, a few other topics as well. And I think there's a lot you can gain by understanding these concepts. So let's do it. So let's start at the top here with function syntax. I kind of already talked about this, so I won't do it again here. You can see that we have a function with a name because we didn't really need to do that in this problem. And I kind of talked about that with the add function. And we can also take anonymous functions like this and then give them a name by assigning them to a variable. And also in JavaScript, we can immediately invoke function expressions. So what that basically means is when you create an anonymous function like this one, you can immediately execute it as the function is declared. So to give a quick example of that in our code, let's actually change this instead of returning a function. This nested function is actually going to be called. So in our example over here, we can actually instead of returning this function that we've declared here, we can actually call the function and then return. So tell me, how does this differ now? Now that our create hello world is not returning a function, we're actually calling the function and returning returning the value. So now this instead of being a function is just going to be the string. Hello world. Now continuing with the article over here, they pretty much just review some things that I've talked about. We can declare functions inside of other functions. There's another concept of function hoisting. What that essentially means is that we can create a function like add taking two values a and B and just returning them like to returning the sum of them. And we can actually call that function up here before it's declared like this code will execute fine. 
even though add is up here. Because what function hoisting does is it essentially takes all function declarations and hoists them to the top of the file. So it basically acts as if this function was declared before it was called. I do want to mention though that if we go into Python and if we do pretty much the same code now, create a function, we create an add function, it takes in two parameters a and b and then returns the sum of them. And then we call the function after it's declared, that will work fine. But if we try to call the function before it's declared up here and we run it, we get an error. Now, if I reverse it and do the other one, it works fine. We get the output three that we would expect. So as you can see, Python does not support function hoisting, though JavaScript as a language does. Now, quickly, I want to mention there's actually a third way to declare functions in JavaScript. They're anonymous functions and they're called arrow functions. A lot of languages support them. Basically, we can do something like this, where this is our parameter and this is like the actual function block. And then uh, let's say we're trying to do the same function here, right? Taking two parameters, A and B, and then returning the sum of them. A plus B is equal to that. And then we assign that to a variable like add to give it a name. And now add is assigned to this. Pretty much uh, this is equivalent to doing this. These two functions are essentially equivalent, but there's a really important point. These anonymous functions do not support function hoisting. Let me prove it to you. So now let's go into a JavaScript IDE, copy and paste our code. I'm going to get rid of this one for now. So we declared a function with the function keyword and we called it before it was declared. And instead of returning this, I'm actually going to print the value so we can see the output. Let's run this. And as you can see, we got the expected output three. Now let's replace this with an anonymous function and let's get this and make sure we print the output. So now let's try the exact same thing with an anonymous function. And you'll see that we get an error because anonymous functions do not support hoisting. Okay. So back to the editorial, we can go ahead and continue to finally the important topic of the day, closures, which to be honest, isn't super related to hello world, but let's continue. What closure means is that functions in JavaScript have access to variables outside of their scope. So going back to our IDE for a second, we have a function that adds two variables A and B and a console logs them. This can actually do more than that though. If I declare some variable here, const C is equal to 10, I can not only add, well here we're not really adding, we're just uh, printing them, but A plus B plus C. This function has access to C even though it's outside of the scope. Now if we run this, uh, well we're not doing anything, so let's call add one plus two, but you'll see the output is not three, it's 13 because we do have access to C. You can see they have their own example here where they have an outer function create adder, which takes a parameter A, an inner function F, which takes a parameter B, but this inner function actually also has access to A, even though it's outside of the scope. So it can add them together. When JavaScript was first created, it didn't support classes. So what people would do is they would get around that by using factory functions. So I'm gonna create a function called create counter, which is not going to return a value. It's gonna return an object. The only field is gonna be a value, which is initially gonna be zero. We're gonna have a function which increments it called increment plus plus and then return the value. Well, let's return it in the same line after we have incremented it. So now and let's fix the typo. This is our function, but we are not returning an object. It's not doing anything. Yes, this has scope. Yes, this function can access this value and increment it, but it's not doing anything now. This create counter can't really return the object until we actually return it. With JavaScript syntax, we can create an object like this. And the only thing we need to expose externally is the increment method. So we're going to say increment is going to be set to our increment method that we defined up here. So now when we use this create counter and call it, we're going to create a couple counters, one counter one and counter two. Now each of these counters is an object for each of them. Let's start incrementing their values. Let's say console.log counter counter one dot increment. And let's do it again. And let's do it also for counter two and see what happens. Okay, we got one, two, one. That's pretty much what we would expect because we want each counter to have its own value. But how does that work? How is JavaScript doing that? Yeah, closure tells us this has access to the value variable. 
But every time this function is called, we're creating a new value variable. So each increment will get access to its own copy of a value. And when we return this, we are exposing access to the increment function. So this is hidden state, right? Closure is all about hidden state. And hidden state, of course, can be used for object-oriented programming. It's pretty useful for that. So I really wanted to illustrate this because I think this is because I think this is a really important example of closure. Okay, so back to the editorial, let's continue. We can see they're talking about arrow syntax, which I pretty much already covered. And I also covered that it does not support function hoisting. I guess one thing I didn't talk about is that we can omit the return value. We know that with anonymous functions, like up here, we're given a couple parameters and then the block of the function, we can do some stuff here and then return a value. But if we have a really simple function that's just adding two values together, we don't actually have to put that return statement explicitly. So this is anonymous function taking two parameters, adding them together. And here, since we don't have those curly braces around our block function, that tells us that this will immediately be returned. And it's just a single line. If you want to omit the return, you can only have a single line function. So now let's go ahead and continue. They briefly talk about the differences between function and arrow syntax. Now, lastly, let's get into what these dot dot dots mean over here. This is called the spread operator. Basically, let's say I have two arrays like this, A and B, and I want to combine them together. I can do that like this. I can create a new array like this, take all the values from A and add them to this array. And I can do that with the spread operator. It basically expands every value in an iterable like an array. So we can do this. That's the first value of the array. And the second value of the array is going to be dot, dot, dot B. But this array will not have two values because we're actually going to expand everything from each array. And then we're going to go ahead and print it. And then taking a look at the output, we can see we get what we would expect. Now, if I declare a function like add, and I want to be given an iterable like args, I can access the values that are given in this by using the index. So I can say args at index zero plus args at index one and then return that value or rather just console dot log it. And then let's call this function passing in a few arguments like one and two. We could have also taken a and actually expanded it like dot 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 a and then run this and you can see we get three, we get one plus two. We can also just pass in values like one and two. And then we also get three. Let's change this to like a seven just to prove it or an eight to prove that it's different. Yep. Eight plus two. So that's kind of how this is working. Now in the vast majority of languages, you would just use an array and you can use that in JavaScript as well. I was just trying to illustrate what exactly the syntax is doing, but this is not what you would usually use it for. You usually wouldn't create functions like this. There's really no purpose to do it like that. You would probably do this though. The spread operator is a pretty good way of concatenating arrays. Now here they do tell us that the primary reason we would use this is to create factory functions that return new functions, which by the way, functions that return new functions are called higher order functions. If that term doesn't make a lot of sense to you, think about it this way. We have here a function that returns another function. So to say that create hello world is a higher order function, which basically means that we can actually call it twice. And the first time it's called, it's going to return the function. And the second time it's called, it's going to return the string. But this is getting pretty long. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up now. You can see that they have a few solutions, but they're pretty trivial. And I think if you understood everything I talked about before, you won't really gain anything from these. But let me know what you think of this video and let me know how we can improve things. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.